Salve. Let's learn the present subjunctive. Let's begin. Subjunctive is one of four moods of a verb. The word mood comes from the Latin word modus, which means a way or a method. There are four tenses in the subjunctive mood. You have already learned the indicative mood, which is the way to express facts in Latin. You have also learned the imperative mood, which is a way to express commands. Quick review. You know, or should know, that there are four groups of verbs called conjugations. Each conjugation has a thematic vowel. First conjugation, A. Second conjugation, long E. Third conjugation, short I. Fourth conjugation, long I. We've been using pattern verbs to memorize the pattern for each conjugation. So paro, parare, parawi, paratum. The pattern verb for first conjugation, note the A. But there are a few exceptions, like the verb do, dare, dedi, and then datum, I give. You wo, you are, you we, and utum are both irregular. Sto staris deti is irregular. Second conjugation, teneo, tenere, tenui, and then tentum, which might originally have had a vowel in there, tenetum, which dropped out, is a typical second conjugation verb. Again, note the pattern vowel. Third conjugation, rego, regera, or I think sometimes we use the verb mito, mitera. And when you conjugate the verb mito, mitera, or rego, regera, we're looking for short eyes. And then in the third person plural, a u. Remember, there's a subgroup called the three io verbs, all of which forms have an i in them. Third plural, iunt. Finally, fourth conjugation has a long i sound that shows up all over the place, except third person singular, short, third person plural, short. I can't urge you enough to sing the pattern verb song in order to get all of the present indicative forms down. Here are three verbs in the third person plural, present indicative. Second conjugation, pareo, parere, I obey. Three I O conjugation, pario, parara, I give birth to, and paro, our pattern verb for first conjugation, parara, to prepare, or I prepare to prepare. Back to the present subjunctive. The word subjunctive comes from the Latin word sub, meaning under, and jungo, jungere, jungsi, jungtum, I join, as in our Hackley motto, remember, iuncti uamus, joined or united, we help. The subjunctive gets its name because there are many uses of the subjunctive mood in subordinate clauses in Latin sentences, but we'll be learning in the first chapter of our new book a few subjunctives used as main verbs. But first, the formula for forming the present subjunctive. Take the root of the verb. Remember, the infinitive minus the last three letters. Add new vowels, which we are going to learn. And then add the personal endings. M, S, T, mustis, unt. Those should look familiar. And R, ris, tur, more mini and tour. Those also should look familiar. The new vowels we beat all liars. First conjugation e, second conjugation ea, third conjugation a, 
fourth conjugation and 3IO, the letters IA. You can make up your own mnemonic sentence to help you remember the order of these vowels. He steals Bactrians, one student made up earlier this year. Again, the importance of knowing the dictionary entry. If you look at all of the verbs in this column, you see a long E. But for the first verb, paremus, I've got a present subjunctive. The second verb, monemus, is present indicative. And the third verb, which is a third conjugation verb, is actually a future indicative. So while they all look as if they should be the same, each one of them says something different. Repeat the formula, root, new vowels, plus personal endings. So if I take my pattern verb for first conjugation, Paro, paras, parat, remember, was the present indicative. Here I've got the present subjunctive. Root plus new vowel E plus personal endings. In the passive, root plus new vowel plus personal endings, passive. How do you translate the present subjunctive? Using little helping verbs like may or should or let. Irregular verbs have irregular subjunctives. So our irregular verbs sum esse, I am, to be, change the vowels to I. Sim, si, sit, sima, si, to sit. Pasum, which is a compound of sum. Pasim, pasis, pasit, pasimas, pasitas, posint. If you remember the old Beatles album, Let It Be, you can now express that using the present subjunctive, sit. Here are some uses of the subjunctive as a main verb first. Hortatory subjunctive, first person, plural, present subjunctive. We sometimes call this the vegetable clause because let us sounds like lettuce. The, verb hort the word hortatory comes from the Latin verb hortor, which means I encourage. So when you say, let's do something, you're encouraging people to go along with you. Gaude almost igitur, therefore let us rejoice. These are the opening words to an old student song. A second main verb subjunctive is called the jussive. It's usually found in the third person singular or plural. A famous jussive sub subjunctive is caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. A verbum notandum we had a few days ago is a proofreader's term, stet. Let it stand. And you may have seen the words fiat lux. Let light be come, let there be light. Our book also uses the term volative subjunctive, which comes from a Latin verb meaning to will something, usually in the second person, and it's like an imperative, only it's not as commanding. A good way to translate a volative subjunctive is you should. Studias. You should study or study. The fourth main verb subjunctive in our opening chapter is called the optative subjunctive from a Latin verb which means I wish. Optative subjunctives express wishes. Sometimes the Latin word utinam is at the front of the sentence and that word can simply be translated as I wish or if only. Utinam di nobis faweant. May the gods favor us. If only the gods may favor us. I wish the gods may favor us. Nota bene. You can make all of these subjunctives negative by using the negative word ne, especially with the first and third persons. Ne idicamus. Let's not say that. We can still use the negative imperative 
or the second person indicating don't do something. And really, subjunctive mood is all around us. Every time you begin a statement with the words, if only, you're saying a wish. When you use the word let's, you're expressing encouragement or a hortatory subjunctive. You should write notes in your notebook is a volative subjunctive, which is like a less demanding command. Let's call it a day, a second hortatory subjunctive. So have fun learning the subjunctive.